the analytical mind all too often gets a bad rap in Buddhist circles, especially Western Buddhist circles. But all too often that's a, an excuse for laziness and mediocrity, not wanting to think, saying that thinking is bad. Thinking has its place in the meditation, and your powers of analysis have their place as well. They're just learning how to use them at the right time. After all, think about the Buddha. He had to analyze his path. He was looking for what was skillful, but he didn't have much guidance. So he had to look at his actions and see what he was doing, what he was doing that was wrong, and then figure out how to do something that was right. That required that he analyze things. But notice, he was analyzing his actions. Our educational system all too often teaches us to analyze anything but. We analyze other people's actions, or other things, other ideas, other abstractions. When we learn, say, scholarly method or the scientific method, that's it's useful. You get a sense of having a sense of what you're doing. And whatever background you have in that, it's useful to turn on your own meditation. We're trying to get the mind quiet. So it learns the skill of how not to think. And sometimes the mind is willing to settle right down. Like some of us tonight. It's been a rough day with the heat. A lot of us are brain dead. And the mind is ready just to settle down and rest. Now the problem there, of course, is that it just might go to sleep. So you have to make your mind active enough to figure out when the signs of sleepiness are coming on and what you can do to prevent them. But it's not the case that everybody's brain dead. Some of us have a mind that just keeps thinking, 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 and just can't stop. The mind thinks that as long as I can analyze things and worry about things enough, I can fend off problems. But that's the mind that has to be taught. There are a lot of problems out there in the world that you can't anticipate. And in cases like that, you'll need a lot of mindfulness and alertness to figure out what to do, what the right thing to do would, would be. A good reason to meditate. To develop those powers of mindfulness and alertness. And there are other ways of thinking your way into stillness. If you're feeling lazy, you can remind yourself, death can come at any time. Wherever there's birth, and we've all been born, the death is going to come. And we don't know when. It could come tonight. Are you ready to go? What would you like to do on your last night? You'd like to meditate. Get your mind in shape. Like that old woman who was a student of a John Furman. She was sitting one night, and a voice came to her and said, You're going to die tonight. So she said, well, as long as I'm going to die, I might as well die meditating to see what was going to happen, how death happened. And she said it was, she felt like her body was going to fall apart. It was like a house on fire. That was the image she used. No matter which room you went into, it was all, all a flame. And then she thought of the space element. So she went there just had the perception of space, space, space in mind, wasn't paying any attention to any certain sensation of the body. And when she came out of that, everything in the body had gone back to normal. She didn't die. That's why we know the story. But she learned an important lesson. That when everything else gets bad in the body, you go to space. But she also learned the lesson that 
when you get cornered like this, if you've been meditating, you're more likely to be able to think up a, a solution. So when you realize that death can come, you want to get your powers of mindfulness, your powers of alertness really strong. So you can face that event, not get knocked off balance. If you find your mind is going to lust, you can think thoughts about the different parts of the body. And ask yourself, which part are you lusting for? And just think about just, just that part. If all you had was that one part, will you go for it? No. How about the other parts? Are any of them really nice in and of themselves? No. You look at your own body, you look at the other body. There's really not much there that's worth getting all worked up about. So why bother? You want something that's really pleasant, you can get to know the breath. In other words, you learn how to think your way into stillness. Use your powers of analysis for the purpose of training the mind. Then you have trouble getting into the body. Well, think about those questions that Dogen used to ask. Here's another one of the ironies that, although often Zen is portrayed as saying, well, you shouldn't think, you should get past your analytical mind. And the Dogen was the master of just sitting. But he wasn't sitting just making his mind empty. He was thinking about, what does it mean to sit? That was his riddle. Is the body sitting in the mind? Is the mind sitting in the body? And you can work on those questions yourself. All too often when we're trying to get into the body, we're trying to push our head down into the body, because we're identifying with the head. You have to ask yourself, wait a minute, the body already has some awareness in the body itself. You don't need to push the head into the body. Where is your awareness of the body? Where is the hand's awareness of the hand, the arm's awareness of the arm, your stomach's awareness of the stomach? There's an awareness already there. Allow that to come to the fore. Then you realize it's not a question of getting into the body. The body's already in the body. Just allowing the parts that are already there to show themselves. Your awareness in your eyes is in the eyes. Your awareness in the nose is in the nose. All the parts of the body are in their right place. This is one of the lessons you learn when you start analyzing, well, what's the problem? And you look at what you're doing. And if you can learn to see that what you're doing is strange, so much the better. Because you're, then you're more likely to try other alternatives to see what is unstrange. Because when the mind settles in the body, Everything seems right. There's a very great sense of normalcy. When things finally do settle down, there's a sense, well, this is where everything belongs. Which means that the mind, when it's worried and thinking about things, is not quite normal. But it can use its abnormal things, in other words, it can use its powers of analysis. get things back to normal. That's what it's useful for. So the analytical mind is not always a bad thing. It's actually necessary for the practice. It's just you have to learn how to analyze when it's good to use it and when it's put, good to put it aside. Once things have settled down, all you have to do is try to maintain them. But that's a point where too much analysis can get in the way. So once the analytical mind understands the principle of time and place, and gets a sense of what's worth analyzing, what's not, then it's a real ally in the practice.